Chazal call it Hoshana Rabba. There's a few reasons why the day is called Hoshana Rabba. The Pshat, the Mishnah Masechet Sukkah says that in the time of the Beit HaMikdash, other than the fact that they would take the Shivat Aminim, sorry, the Arbat Aminim, seven days, they would also take Aravot. They would take Aravot and they would circle the Mizbeach seven times and then they would stick them on the side of the Mizbeach in 11 Ama Arava. They would place it so that one Ama was hovering over the Mizbeach and it was called Yom Hoshana, Hoshana Rabba. And the, the big Hoshana, that's the Pshat. And, but other than that, the Zohar Kedosh speaks very highly about this day. The Ben Ishchai explains why it's called Hoshana Rabba, because there's 51 days from Rosh Chodesh Elul until the, the 21st day of Tishrei, which is Hoshana Rabba. So we say Hoshana, give us a salvation for the Na, Na is 51 in Gematria. For the 51 days that we woke up early, we did Sarihot, we stood before Yom Rosh Hashanah, Sayyidim Meit Teshuvah, Kippur, we left our house, we got into a sukkah, it was hot, rainy, whatever it was, and we had 51 days where we were elevated in Ruchaniyut, in spirituality, and connected to you. So please Hashem, for those, the merit of those days, you should have mercy on Am Yisrael. So that's another reason why it's called Hoshana Rabba. A third reason, it's called Hoshana Rabba, because the tefillot we say tomorrow, and the Hoshanot every day we did once, tomorrow we'll be circling the Teva seven times. And we're going to be saying Hoshana seven different, seven times as long what we did every day. It's going to be a long tefillah. So tomorrow morning we have one minyan here, Bezat Hashem, 6.30 Kobanot. Uh, the nets will be at 7.15 a.m. Amida. And then the tefillah will be a lengthy tefillah, but a very beautiful, uplifting tefillah. We do this minhag, we circle the Teva one time a day for the first six days and seven times the final day. And it's to remember what happened when Am Yisrael entered Eretz Yisrael. It was actually in the month of Nisan they entered with Yoshua. And they circled the wall of Yericho. And every day they would blow the shofar and they would circle it one time. And the seventh day they circled it seven times and the walls collapsed, they fell. So the Arizal writes, other, even though we're not circling the walls of Jericho, but we all have different enemies that surround us. Spiritual ones, kochot adin, God forbid, nekatregim, opponents who come and say what, what sins we've done, and also physical enemies. And on the day, the last day of Sukkot, we read every day the Kobanot. So we conclude all of the Kobanot of Sukkot tomorrow in the reading of the Sefer Torah, which were 70 nations of the world, 70 Kobanot, corresponding to the 70 nations of the world. So it's a very, very powerful day. So it's highly recommended for a person not to let the day slip between your fingers and to really cherish every moment. There are many minagim. The Arizal says to stay up all night. Here, whoever wants to join us, at 12 a.m. I'll be giving a class. We're going to be learning Chavuta. I don't know how many people will come, but everybody's invited. Or even if not, the beginning of the night, the Rav of Koskas will be giving here at 7.30 in the, in the Bet Knesset until 12 a halakha class, a smichat chaver program, a review, a very powerful, uplifting learning. But the, the main idea is that a person should try and find moments of, of reading Tehilim, of praying, of learning Torah, because there's no bigger zechut we could have than learning Torah and praying to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So don't just let the day um, waste, God forbid. A person should try and figure out, schedule his day, how he's going to do whatever he can to do a little bit more. It is the chotam according to the Arizal and the Zohar Kadosh. It's the final concluding stamp of all of the Yamim Anuraim. Therefore, it's a very powerful day. A person should try and uplift it, Bezat Hashem, with spirituality.